If you go to Instagram, TikTok, yourmom.com, or whatever your favorite social media platform is right now, you'll see people praising celebrities like they're gods. But newsflash, celebs are mortal, just like us. Not only that, some celebs met their mortal ends in the weirdest, grossest, and most mysterious ways imaginable. From toilet trouble to Darwin Award-level stunts, join me as we uncover the craziest ways that celebrities have met their maker. John James John James was a Canadian rapper, professional skier, and stunt artist who was at the height of his fame in the 2010s. He was a jack-of-all-trades, even performed various daring stunts for his music videos. Pretty cool, right? However, one trick went a little too far. In 2018, James was performing a particularly ludicrous stunt for an upcoming music video. He thought it'd be a good idea to walk along the wing of a plane. Oh, this is while the aircraft was hundreds of feet in the air. If that wasn't risky enough, James was walking on the wing of a Cessna aircraft, a relatively small plane. So, when he wandered out on the wing, the added weight sent the plane into a downward spiral. Now, James wasn't a complete moron. You see, he'd worn a parachute in case of an emergency. However, in the chaos, he held onto the plane's wing too long. By the time he eventually let go, he didn't have time to open his parachute, and, well, you can guess the rest. Let's just hope they never release that music video. Elvis Presley the king of rock and roll Elvis Presley is one of music's most iconic stars. Despite peaking in the 1950s, he's still the third highest selling music artist in the world. Pretty impressive, right? What's less impressive is the way Elvis bowed out. By the time he hit his 40s, Elvis's health had taken a hit. You see, he had a particular passion for high-fat foods, most notably hamburgers. And as he got older and his metabolism naturally slowed down, his full-fat lifestyle led to him weighing some 350 pounds. That's almost double the weight of today's average man. However, in 1977, at the age of 42, Elvis's overindulgences would catch up with him. While, uh, relieving himself on the toilet, Elvis, who suffered from chronic constipation, had a heart attack. But not just any heart attack. This heart attack was brought on by something called Valsalva's Maneuver, according to the coroner. Essentially, he strained so hard trying to poop it compressed his aorta, one of the main blood supplies to the heart, and in doing so, he gave himself a heart attack. Horrifyingly, the king of rock and roll was found unresponsive by his girlfriend, lying head down, half naked on the bathroom floor. That ain't exactly rock and roll now, is it? Dar Robinson now, Dar Robinson was a famous American stunt performer and actor who held 21 world stunt records from the 1960s through to the 1980s. The King of the Stuntmen, as he was known, is remembered for feats like a 900-foot free fall from the CN Tower. Bad ass. Sadly, though, this daredevil couldn't dodge danger forever. In 1986, Robinson was filming as a stunt double for the action-packed movie Million Dollar Mystery. For one stunt, he had to crash his motorbike into a guardrail at 40 miles per hour before vaulting over it into a safety net. With the most daring task out of the way, he could relax a little, but that'd be a big mistake. Hours later, Robinson was involved in a routine motorbike chase scene. After speeding down a hill, he approached a sharp curve. However, instead of turning with the curve, the stuntman slipped, losing control of his dirt bike before dropping down the craggy 40-foot cliff. Man, how anticlimactic. Steve Irwin If you grew up in the 90s, then you know Steve Irwin was THE man. This Aussie rose to fame as a lovable, nature-enthusiast TV presenter best known for his wildlife series, The Crocodile Hunter. As the name suggests, he was filmed with crocs, spiders, snakes. Essentially, if it could kill you, Steve found a way to get close to it. And in September 2006, Steve was filming a new documentary called Ocean's Deadliest off the coast of eastern Australia. While swimming in shallow waters, Irwin came across a giant 8-foot-wide short-tail stingray. 
Now, any sensible human would think to stay well away from a creature that big. But not Steve Bloody Irwin. He obviously went in for a closer look, knowing stingrays are usually placid animals that, if bothered, will just swim away. Clearly, though, this particular ray was having a bad day. As Irwin approached it, the stingray propped up on its front and suddenly stabbed its eight-inch barb into his chest. Irwin thought the barb had punctured his lung, when in fact it had gone through his heart. If that didn't sound lethal enough, the barb of a short-tailed stingray is also venomous. Well, at least he died doing what he loved. Sure as heck beats dying on the toilet at any rate. It's the merch drop you've all been waiting for. Natural selection in action, the poster. Every corner of this 34 by 22 inch poster is filled with illustrations from more than 70 of my classic Darwin Award stories, such as Man Thinks He's Jesus, Walks on Water, Is Eaten by Crocodile, and Man Attempts to Fly with Balloons, Goes Too Far, Drowns. And who could forget, Man Gets Drunk, Climbs in Bear Enclosure, Is Eaten. Gotta love the classics. Click the link in the description or scan the QR code on screen to purchase this wonderland of stupidity, which should serve as a reminder to never be stupid enough to remove yourself from the gene pool. Bruce Lee Now, it's pretty tricky to find a celeb more fearless than Steve Irwin, but Bruce Lee might just be. The Hong Kong American martial artist and actor found fame performing in movies like Enter the Dragon, The Way of the Dragon, and popularized the iconic phrase, Be water, my friend. So, so cool. You'd imagine it'd take a lot to take this legend down. But that actually wasn't the case. Back in 1973, while acting out some scenes for an upcoming movie, Lee complained of a headache and dizziness. So his lover, Betty Ting, decided to give him a tablet of Equagesic, a strong aspirin-based medication. After taking the tablet, he went to sleep. Tragically, though, he'd never wake up again. The coroner's official cause of the movie star's demise was a cerebral edema, swelling of the brain, triggered by an allergic reaction to the headache medication. However, a recent study argues the headache was actually a symptom of a more serious illness. The study states Lee perished from kidney dysfunction. For someone as trim as Bruce Lee, that may seem odd but he often went on juice diets and drank excessive amounts of water. In other words, he'd done a lot of things that messed with the water balancing systems in his body. This set him up for hyponatremia, where the body holds on to too much water, causing symptoms like nausea, cramping, and you guessed it, headaches. In extreme cases, like the one that affected Lee, hyponatremia can even cause seizures and rapid brain swelling, I think maybe that was too much water, my friend. Jeff Buckley American singer-songwriter Jeff Buckley rose to fame in the mid-1990s with the release of his cover of Hallelujah. Ironically, though, Buckley's end would be far from holy. In 1997, Buckley was in Memphis, recording for a follow-up to his smash hit debut album, Grace. One summer's afternoon, Buckley, along with his friend Keith Foti, were winding down the banks of the Wolf River, a tributary off the Mississippi. The singer decided to get in the water, however, he jumped in fully clothed, not bothering to remove his t-shirt, jeans, or combat boots. Now, swimming is much harder while clothed, as the materials become extremely dense once wet, dragging you down. Still, Buckley was a confident enough swimmer, so he didn't think much of it. Everything was going swimmingly, until a boat came Buckley's way. With Buckley passing behind the boat, his friend lost sight of him. What happened next? No one knows. One thing was for sure, though. Buckley disappeared. Most likely, the motion of the boat through the water created a turbulent flow, which pulled the singer under. After Buckley's body was spotted five days later, a medical report showed he had no traces of any substances in his system, so this bizarre scene unfolded while he was completely sober. Wow, that's almost less rock and roll than dying on the toilet. John Denver But Jeff Buckley isn't the only singer to go down, literally. Famous country singer-songwriter John Denver is known for classic hits like Take Me Home Country Road, as well as Leaving on a Jet Plane. 
Creepily, though, John kind of sang about his own demise. When he wasn't recording smash hits, John enjoyed piloting aircraft. Over the course of his career, he'd racked up more than 2,700 hours in the air. However, back in October 1997, Denver had just picked up a flashy new Long Easy aircraft and was keen to take it for a test flight. He took off from Monterey Peninsula Airport before heading out over the Pacific Ocean. It was clear weather, blue skies, a perfect day to fly. But at 5.28 p.m., several witnesses heard a loud bang. Denver's plane had dropped straight down into the ocean. But he was an experienced pilot. What possibly could have happened? Well, in his eagerness to fly, Denver appeared to have forgotten to refuel the plane. That's odd. A licensed pilot would do thorough pre-flight checks for this sort of thing, right? Well, he wasn't actually licensed. He'd had his license revoked more than a year before. And now, I think we know why. Man, first Bruce Lee, then Jeff Buckley, now John Denver. Celebrities and water do not mix. Jim Heseldon Not all celebs come from the silver screen. Jim Heseldon, for example, found fame as an entrepreneur, developing the Hesco Bastion, used for military fortifications. With all the millions he made, he acquired Segway Incorporated, creators of the iconic two-wheeled personalized motor from its inventor in 2009. Little did he know, that decision would be his downfall. After acquiring the company, Heseldon presumably used the flashy wheeler to get about. On one of his journeys, the entrepreneur came across a dog walker. Now, normally that'd be fine, but Heseldon was riding his Segway near a pretty daring drop. In a bid to give the dog walker more room, Heseldon reversed back, but in doing so, he lost control of the Segway before disappearing from sight. Can you guess where he ended up? Yep, sadly both him and his Segway dropped down 40 feet below. Neither survived. Well, let's segue on to the next celeb, shall we? Xiao Chiumei. Whether it's Addison Rae, Bella Porch, or Charlie D'Amelio, a new generation of celebs have emerged in recent years on the social media app TikTok. It's no different in China, where 23-year-old Xiao Chiumei gained more than 100,000 followers on the Chinese equivalent, Douyin. Chiumei was a crane operator who rose to fame with her live streams live from the cabin. One day in July 2021, Chiume was filming a video like any other, recording herself way up on the crane. But somehow, she took a misstep and fell out of the vehicle's cabin, dropping down 160 feet to her demise. That'd be like falling off the top of Nelson's column in London. That sounds bad, but what's even more horrifying is that she held onto her phone during the fall, live streaming the whole tragic event. Social media is full of some freaky stuff, but that might top it all, or I guess, technically bottom. Timbo the Redneck But Xiao Chiomei isn't the only TikToker star to meet their maker in a harrowing way. Timothy Hall, otherwise known as Timbo the Redneck, gained more than 200,000 followers on TikTok, posting videos of himself fishing, performing gags, and doing stunts in his beloved pickup truck, Big Booty Judy. Huh, nice. However, like all dangerous women, Judy would be Timbo's undoing back in 2021. The 18-year-old was doing donuts in Judy, but was going way too fast. He suddenly lost control of Judy before flying out of the driver's side window. Bruised and disoriented, he didn't have the awareness to get out of the way before Judy flipped over, landing on top of him. Damn. Well, let that be a lesson. The only donuts you need in your life are the glazed kind. Aeschylus But it's not only in recent years that famous figures have suffered from some crazy twists of fate. Nearly 2,500 years before TikTok Timbo's demise, playwright Aeschylus was kicking about in ancient Greece. Known as the father of tragedy, his nickname would become incredibly ironic. One morning, Aeschylus ventured outside, presumably to think up the plot of his next play. Unbeknownst to him, an eagle, which had just hunted down a tortoise, was holding it in its talons and flying above. The story goes that the eagle mistook Aeschylus's shiny bald head for a rock, and in an attempt to crack the tortoise's shell, 
dropped it on Aeschylus's noggin. Maybe the bird just hated his plays? If that wasn't cursed enough, it's said Aeschylus had been staying outdoors to avoid a prophecy that he'd be taken down by a falling object. When your luck's out, your luck's out. Considering he was the father of tragedy, there's a chance his end could have been fabricated by later Greek playwrights. Guess that makes this guy the first shell ebrity. Yes, I know it's a terrible joke. There's a reason I'm a YouTuber and not a comedian. King Henry I Tortoises aren't the only animals to have struck down a celeb. Henry I was one of the most famous men of the 12th century, reigning as the King of England from 1100 to 1135. Now, in the Middle Ages, lampreys were considered a delicacy among the elite. King Henry had a bit of an obsession with these jawless fish, which are most famous for their hellish, hooked-tooth-lined sucker mouth. Blech. But during one of these grim binge fests, a contemporary chronicler claimed Henry was chowing down on a lamprey when, without warning, he suddenly doubled over and died. Wait, did he choke? Did he have an allergic reaction? What part of this gross feast killed him exactly? Well, improperly removing the lamprey's mucus covering and failing to wash the meat has been known to cause lamprey poisoning. In these cases, people can suffer from vomiting, diarrhea, and cramps, but there are no confirmed fatalities. So while that mucusy meal may have made Henry sick, something else likely finished him off. A recent research paper claimed the probable culprit was actually a bacteria called Listeria monocytogenes. This deadly foodborne bacteria has a mortality rate of up to 30%, with complications including meningitis, gastroenteritis, and sepsis. The bacteria thrives in cold, damp conditions similar to the ones present at Henry's stone fortress. So the King of England was either taken down by fish or germs. I'm not sure which is worse. Tycho Brahe Is there any worse feeling in the world than when you're dying to take a leak, but you can't get to the bathroom? Tycho Brahe knew that feeling all too well. Brahe was a 16th century Danish astronomer, known for cataloging over 1,000 stars in his time. Being an astronomer, you'd think Brahe wouldn't have a very flamboyant lifestyle, but that wasn't the case. He kept a pet moose, and he lost part of his nose while battling in a sword duel, famously wearing a brass one to replace it. Yet the most remarkable part of Brahe's life was its ending. In 1601, the stargazer was invited to a banquet. Midway through his meal, he had a sudden urge to whiz, but thinking it was bad etiquette, Brahe held it in, and he did a pretty good job. In fact, he held it in so well that when he eventually got home hours later, he could no longer pee. For days after, Brahe was unable to take a whiz. Alongside that, he began to experience insomnia, a continuous fever, and delirium. Symptoms in keeping with someone suffering from a burst bladder. Eventually, after 11 agonizing days, Brahe's bladder got the better of him. Yikes. Well, now you know, next time you need to take a leak at a banquet, don't try and be polite. Hans Steininger While he may not be well known today, Hans Steininger was a big deal back in the mid-16th century. He was the mayor of Braunau Ammen in Austria. But what really got eyeballs on this guy was his facial hair. Steininger donned a famous four-and-a-half-foot-long beard, stretching down past his feet. His fuzzy facial feature was so long he usually folded it up and stuffed it in his pocket. In September 1567, there was a fire in Braunau Am Inn. In the days before fire engines and water hoses, a blaze could quickly reduce a town to ashes. So, being the town's mayor, the bearded boss knew he had to take action to fight the fire. However, amidst the chaos, he forgot to fold up his beard. While approaching a set of stairs, Steininger accidentally stepped on his beard, throwing him off balance and making him fall down a flight of stairs. I guess you could say that trip was a stairway to heaven for him. Rod Hull Ever been relaxing watching TV when all of a sudden… Oh, it can be pretty frustrating, can't it? No one knew that feeling better than Rod Hull. 
This guy was a famous British comedian and entertainer, popular in the 1970s and 80s, who was never seen without his goofy puppet sidekick, Emu. In 1999, Hull was watching a soccer match with his son Oliver in their living room, but all of a sudden, the picture cut out. Annoyed, instead of ringing a professional, Hull decided to fix the issue himself by getting a ladder and climbing onto his roof to adjust the aerial. Waiting in the living room to tell his dad if the picture returned, Oliver suddenly heard a crash followed by a thud. But that wasn't the aerial falling. What he'd actually heard was his dad losing his balance, crashing through their greenhouse and landing on its concrete floor. Oof, all I can say is thank God satellite TV is a thing of the past. Sonny Bono Long before Beyonce and Jay-Z or Meghan and Harry, there was another power couple who rocked the world, Sonny and Cher. This American pop and entertainment duo peaked in the 1960s and 70s, featuring the goddess of pop Cher and her former husband, Sonny. And while you've likely heard of Cher, Sonny was a big deal back in the day too. Whether it was for his singing, acting, or even his role as mayor of Palm Springs, this guy was everywhere. Well, up until January 1998 at least. To kick off the new year, Sonny went on a family skiing trip up to Heavenly Ski Resort in California. He was skiing with his then-wife, Mary Whitaker, and their two children when he left them to ski alone. The rest of the family waited at the bottom of the slope for Sonny to ski down, but hours later, there was no sign of him. After a search and rescue patrol was sent out, they found him, and not in a good way. Somehow, Sonny had veered off course, skiing headfirst into a tree at the side of the slope. Yeah, human head versus tree stump, I don't need to tell you who won that battle. Luciano Reciccone Soccer players don't have a reputation for being the sharpest tools in the box, but one particular player took that reputation of stupidity to new lows back in 1977. Luciano Reciccone was an Italian professional soccer star playing for Team Lazio as well as his national team. Aside from playing soccer, Reciccone was said to have a love for practical jokes. So one day, Ray Ciccone and his teammate decided to cause some mischief in a jewelry shop in Rome. They thought it'd be a bright idea to walk in, shouting hands in the air while masking their faces with their jackets. Ah, <sighs> truly genius. Unbeknownst to them, however, just a week earlier, the jewelers had been burgled for real. As a result, the paranoid owner pulled out a shotgun. While his teammates spotted the gun and raised his hands, Ray Ciccone continued on with the idiotic prank until the shopkeeper opened fire. Despite being rushed to hospital, the soccer star didn't make it, with his final words being, It's just a joke. I know I shouldn't mock the dead, but buddy, to be a joke, it has to be funny. Claude Francois The incredible French pop singer and songwriter Claude Francois rose to fame in the 60s after co-writing the lyrics to the original version of My Way. But for all his musical genius, it seemed like Francois was lacking some common sense. In 1978, while relaxing at his Parisian apartment, Francois decided to run himself a bath. Just as he got into the bathtub and started to unwind, the singer realized something. The light was off. For some reason, the lamp above his head wasn't working. So, Francois had the bright idea to go ahead and fix it. There was one problem, though. His body was still in the water of the bathtub. Now, you don't need me to tell you water and electricity isn't a good mix. And predictably, as he touched the light bulb, the sodden singer suffered a lethal electrocution. What a shocking way to go. Harry Houdini now, I bet most of you think you know how Harry Houdini, the Hungarian-American escape artist and illusionist, died. It's a story almost as famous as the man himself. He would perform mind-blowing stunts like burying himself six feet under and escaping from a water-filled milk can. But I'm here to tell you, you don't know the full story. So let's start back in October 1926, where Houdini was giving a lecture at McGill University in Montreal. After the lecture, he invited some of his students into his dressing room to talk further. It was then one of the students asked Houdini if it was true that he could resist punches to the stomach, a claim he'd made before. 
When Houdini said the rumors were true, the student immediately put it to the test, punching the stuntman four or five times in the abdomen. Normally, Houdini would have tensed to resist these, but he was reclining on the sofa, and the student had hit him in the stomach when he was completely unprepared, which left him in considerable pain. He brushed it off, however, later that day he began to feel stomach cramps, and his condition only worsened the next day. On board a train for his next run of performances, he experienced severe abdominal pain, cold sweats, and a soaring temperature of over 100 degrees. A doctor suspected Houdini had appendicitis, yet being the performer he was, Houdini refused to cancel his show. Somehow, he struggled through. Yet, as the final curtain drew, Houdini collapsed to the floor. Despite being rushed to the hospital, it was all too late for the stuntman. Doctors removed his appendix, however, it had ruptured days earlier, poisoning his insides. So, the story of the famous punch that killed Houdini has been told many times over, but the punch wasn't likely to blame. You see, while traumatic appendicitis, which is an appendicitis brought on by injury, can happen, it's extremely rare, and Houdini was operated on nine days after the initial encounter. If he'd had a burst appendix that entire time, he'd have barely been able to stand, let alone travel and do a show. Anyone like me who's had appendicitis can confirm just how painful it is. So did the punch burst the appendix? Probably not. But spending years avoiding the most extreme and horrifying deaths possible only to be taken out by your own organs. Now that's crazy. And before you leave, just a reminder to check out our masterpiece, Natural Selection in Action, the poster. I promise it's to die for. Can you think of any more stars that went down in extraordinary circumstances? Let me know in the comments below, and thanks for watching.